In this video, we're just going to go through the very quick example of assembling a Class A transistor amplifier in LT SPICE and hopefully observing the input and output waveforms. So very quickly, we'll put this circuit together just using the function commands in the top right hand corner, which I tend to rely on rather than the sort of menu options, because depending on which version of the software you use, the um, menu might look a little bit different. So we're using F2 to insert components. Um, so I'm just pressing F2 on my keyboard here. You might have to hold down the function button FN uh, on a smaller laptop or Mac keyboard, um, FN, and then press F2. But either way, we get this menu here. And the first thing we need is an NPN transistor, which is going to form the sort of core of our circuit here. And I'm just going to put that there. I can just press escape, otherwise I end up inserting more components. I'm going to add in three, four resistors in this circuit. And I can do that on Windows just by pressing the letter R on the keyboard. Um, but likewise, just using the um, component menu F2, um, I can choose res for resistor. Either way, we're going to insert four of these. Um, a couple over here. These are going to be our biasing resistors, which we'll talk about in a moment. And we're going to have a resistor on the collector and a resistor on the emitter of our, our transistor as well. Um, along with this, we need some kind of power supply for our circuit. And I'm just going to press V on the keyboard, or likewise in the F2 menu, I can choose a voltage. Um, and I'm going to put that voltage over there. That's going to be the sort of power supply for our circuit, as it were. But on the left-hand side, I also want some kind of input voltage um, that's going to be an AC waveform. I'm going to put that on the left-hand side there as well. So I've got two voltage sources. With any of these sort of components or cursors, I just press escape to, um, to, to lose them again. And the last thing I need is some capacitors. I'm going to have a couple of what are called coupling capacitors on the input and the output. And to put those in place, um, I've just pressed C, or we can choose cap from the menu uh, for capacitor. When I'm sort of um, placing these components, I can press Control and R to rotate them. Um, so I'm going to put a, a capacitor in on the input and one that's going to form the output um, of our circuit. I'm just going to put those in those positions there for now. I'll move them about in a bit later. I'm also going to lastly put what's called a bypass capacitor um, somewhere near the bottom alongside R4 there. I think those are our um, components that we need for this circuit. All that means now is to join them up. And to do that, I'm going to use F3 to join these up with a wire. So F3, first of all, I'm going to join those emitter and collector resistors to the collector and the emitter of the transistor respectively. And I'm going to take this uh, base connection of the transistor and I'm going to connect it to our sort of input coupling capacitor there. We mentioned that these two resistors here form the biasing stage. And what I mean by that is we're going to apply an AC waveform here that's going to connect to our input and eventually to our um, transistor. Now, the transistor is a semiconducting component and it only conducts in forward bias. But a bit like a diode, our transistor allows current to flow in forward bias, but not in reverse bias. And the problem is we want to amplify an AC waveform here. This, this input voltage is going to be AC. And so it's going to be sort of alternating between positive and negative. Now, as it stands at the minute, our transistor would be able to amplify the forward bias current or the positive current, but not the negative current. And so we'd end up with sort of a half waveform on the output, which we don't want. So the purpose of the biasing stage here is to add a DC component to our waveform to increase that waveform upwards so that it's always in the positive domain. We talk about that a bit more in our practical video, but this is our these are our biasing resistors, basically a potential divider that's going to be connected to 
our power supply. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just pressing spacebar to get back to um, I've, I've gone off the screen there. Spacebar to sort of zoom to fit. I'm going to connect my biasing stage and my collector resistor to the power supply. And likewise at the bottom, um, the emitter resistor to the negative of the power supply. And again, space bar to zoom to fit there. So this potential divider between R1 and R2 is adding a DC component. And so rather than that um, waveform, that input waveform being sort of centered around zero, positive, negative, positive, negative, now it's been increased by the DC component that's been added so that we've still got a waveform, but it's always positive. It's always above zero. And that means that our transistor amplifier here, our transistor is able to amplify the whole waveform, not just half of it. And that's what we mean by a class A amplifier. It has this biasing stage here. Uh, we have a couple of components left to collect. connect. We've got this capacitor here. This is going to be our output here um, that I'm just going to sort of leave unconnected for now. The last thing, our bypass capacitor, I want in parallel with R4, that emitter resistor. So at this stage now, everything is just about connected. The only thing that I want to add on that I've not done so already is a ground. And I'm going to add a ground to the negative end of that input um, supply there. And I'm also going to add a ground to the bottom rail of that um, sort of circuit um, power supply there as well. So at this stage, the, the circuit's pretty much complete. We haven't defined any values, though. So I'm going to just um, use some values. There's no sort of rhyme or reason to these. But what I'm going to try and do is keep these values um, roughly similar to values that um, we used in the practical, um, the breadboarding practical. Um, so I've got 30K um, resistor on the top there, 3K9 or 3.9K. Uh, for R2 there. R3 I'm going to make as a 10k resistor. Uh, R4 I'm going to make as a 1k resistor. And these capacitors, input and output, um, I'm going to make these coupling capacitors 10 microfarads. I'm going to use um, 10 U, U um, in place of mu, uh, which it sort of changed it to there for micro, so 10 microfarads would input input as 10U. Um, I've clicked on the resistor there, I meant the capacitor, sorry. 10U on that output coupling capacitor as well. And C3, this bypass capacitor, I'm gonna make it 33 nanofarads, which is 33N in this, uh, this input here. Um, our voltage here on the right-hand side, I'm gonna use a 12 volt power supply, so just 12. I'm just right clicking to edit each of these. And on the right hand, uh, sorry, on the left hand side, this input, I want a um, sinusoidal AC waveform. So when I right click on this, by default, it's a, a DC voltage for that, that input there. Um, like on the right hand side, that's fine for a DC voltage. But on the left hand side, I want an AC voltage. And so I'm going to click on advanced here and I get some more options and I can choose a sine wave. Um, we don't need um, too many of these options. I'm just going to use two of them, I think. The amplitude, we'll just set a small signal um, with amplitude of 30 millivolts. So 30M for milli, small m for milli. 30 millivolts for the amplitude. And I'm going to uh, set a frequency of 1 kilohertz, so 1K, 1000 hertz. Uh, the rest of these I think we can just leave as they are. I'm going to click OK. And we have something that looks like that there. The last thing to do before we run our simulation is to um, actually give the SPICE command. In other words, we're telling LT SPICE what it is that we want it to do with this simulation. So to do that, I'm just going to press the letter T. And by default, I can insert a comment. In other words, just plain text, like my title up here and these um, function buttons. These were just comments. I'm going to change that to a spice directive. And it's not entirely obvious, but what you can do in this sort of blank box here, if you're not familiar with spice language or the commands and the formatting of them, is you can right click in here and we have this help me edit option here. 
which is sort of hidden away there. And I'm going to choose analysis command. We're going to carry out a transient analysis, which in other words means we're going to observe a period of time. And the period of time that I want to observe is just 10 milliseconds. So I'm going to type in 10 M, just 10 M for milli. Uh, by default, it's a time measured in seconds, so I don't need to type S for seconds. It's just 10 M, 10 milliseconds. Um, I don't think we need anything else there. I'm just going to click OK. And we get this bit of text. It doesn't matter where we put that. It can go anywhere. I'm just going to put it in the bottom left there. OK, so with that all being done, I think we're ready to run our simulation. I'm going to click on Run on the menu bar. And we now have this sort of blank graph. But notice that the x-axis goes from 0 to 10 milliseconds, which is what we asked for in that command. But there's nothing plotted on it yet. I'm going to plot two things. I'm going to plot the input, and I'm going to plot the output. So the input um, was measured here. You'll notice that now that we're running the simulation, we have this sort of voltage cursor, this probe cursor, to take measurements of voltages at, at different nodes or currents flowing through different components. You can see the current meter sort of um, cursor slightly different there. We just want to measure a couple of voltages for the purposes of what we're doing here. So I'm going to measure the input voltage, which is here, the voltage from our input. And notice we set it as an input of um, 30 millivolts in amplitude. So there it is, um, 30 millivolts on the y-axis there. And I'm going to measure the output, and the output is going to be uh, measured on the very end of, if I zoom in a little bit, um, we're just going to measure the output at the end of this capacitor. I might actually need to put another sort of bit of dummy wire in um, to measure from. So I'm just going to press F3. I'm going to add a little bit of wire that goes nowhere. Um, and then you'll see I've got a voltage probe there now. Um, one thing I would recommend doing, because I've made a change to the circuit, I might have added an additional sort of node or, or parameter that wasn't there originally. It's a good idea to run that simulation again, because the simulation won't take into account things that I've changed in the interim. Um, so I've changed that, I've run that um, simulation again. I'm just going to click there to measure the output voltage. So it looks at a glance like um, this isn't doing anything, but actually what's happened is because I've added that extra little node in, it's reordered the numbers of the nodes. I'll explain what I mean. Um, if you hover over that um, node in the very bottom left-hand corner of the screen, you can see that it's calling that VN003. Now, VN003 we plotted, it was what was um, our input node there. VN003 was here. Now that's called VN004 if you look in the very bottom left-hand side of the corner. So it's changed what it's plotting, actually, and you'll see now the amplitude of our um, waveform is now 300 millivolts. So by changing and rerunning that circuit, um, it, it's, it's changed the order of things. What I can do is just plot this one now, which was VN003, now it's VN004. That's our input waveform, so we've got our input and our output. If ever in doubt, these um, sort of hotkeys for um, deleting things count on this um, pane as well. If I, if I click on the, the graph pane, I press F5, I can delete traces, I can delete VN003 and delete VN004. Let's do it again, just to make it clear, because it's um, changed it since I edited it. So now I'm plotting the input, which is now VN004, and the output, which is now VN003. Um, it's a bit confusing when you sort of make changes and then rerun the simulation. So it's worth just making sure that it corresponds, what you're plotting corresponds with what you're hovering over in the bottom left of the screen there. Anyway, so what we have now is our input waveform and our output waveform. And what we can see is this, this um, transistor amplifier has an inverting characteristic when it comes to the voltage. The positive voltage will give a negative output and a negative input will give a positive output. The gain also, very roughly, not counting the inclusion of this um, this uh, capacitor here, which affects things a little bit, if we ignore that capacitor, the gain of this amplifier, in terms of voltage gain anyway, 
is roughly equivalent to the ratio of R3 to R4. So you can see that R3 is 10K, R4 is 1K, so 10 to 1, which is roughly going to give me a gain of 10. So what we can see is that that's approximately the case. We had an input of 30 millivolts, if you remember. We're measuring an output of 300 millivolts. And so that corresponds with um, approximately that, that sort of rule of thumb with regards to the ratio there. Um, that depends on the frequency because this capacitor is in parallel with that, that resistor there. Um, and that's going to affect that, that sort of parallel impedance because the capacitor's impedance itself, its reactance, is dependent on frequency. If you remember, I'll just insert some text here, the reactance of a capacitor is 1 over 2 pi Fc. And um, I'll just put that to the side there. So as the frequency changes, the impedance of this capacitor changes, which changes this bottom impedance, which changes that ratio. So this rule doesn't quite hold true when that bypass capacitor is in place. If you want, you can just delete that capacitor. To, to be honest, for our purposes, it probably won't change much of what's going on when I rerun that simulation. But um, hopefully you found this video useful in how we can approximately sort of um, observe the inputs and the outputs. One little hang up of LT spice is this sort of like output connection that isn't going anywhere isn't probably the correct or best way to do things and we should have some kind of output impedance here. So for instance if you're measuring the output um, with an oscilloscope probe that has a, an impedance of, of one megahertz say, what I could do is insert a resistance here of one meg, in other words, one megahertz, um, and ground that. And then what we have here is something a little bit more realistic because it's connectors. I've connected um, accidentally to that voltage there. So I'm going to delete that um, and try again. We'll connect that over a little bit higher and then down so it's not connecting to the um, voltage there. And here's something that's a little bit more realistic now because our um, output isn't just sort of hanging in midair like it was. We're actually sort of um, connecting that through a proper output impedance. And we'll see that that changes the result respectively. Um, we're also changing the node that we're measuring at. So I'm going to delete what I'm measuring here. I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to measure um, if we run the simulation again, the input and what will now be the output. Um, notice it's VN002 now, the, the nodes have reordered in the bottom left there. Um, there's our input and our output with that um, output impedance connected as well. So just be aware of that. Whenever I make a change to the circuit, LT Spice kind of automatically allocates nodes to each little connection in the circuit. And if you make a change, those nodes might be sort of reordered with not much rhyme or reason to it. Um, so it's worth sort of re rechecking or retaking those measurements to make sure you're measuring the right thing. Um, because ever since I've added that resistor in now, my output is now VN002, where it was something else previously. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful in how we can um, assemble this Class A amplifier and observe the input and the output waveforms just using um, this simulation software LT Spice.